even as voracious as pike sometimes seem, they do become negatively conditioned after being caught on a bait once or twice. With angler pressure, this can happen in even very remote areas of Canada or Alaska. Baits that these fish don't see regularly can be a great advantage in getting spoon or spinner savvy pike to bite. Soft plastics, jigs, or pig and jigs and topwater baits like buzz baits can really provide some fantastic results when pike don't want to cooperate on more conventional baits. You know what's nice about the double buzzer is you can fish the bait very slowly. Kind of the one, one of the misconceptions on pike is they want something real fast. And with these double buzzers, you can just fish them both slow and and with the, with the blades, you get a lot of lift. Ah, got it! Oh, did you see that wake coming on behind that fish? I go, we're gonna get bit. We're gonna get bit. I might have to put a, that stinger hook. That last fish took my stinger, and I might have to put that back on. You know, a lot of times when you get one of those baits or a fish that just come up and slurp the bait in, those are the big fish. They don't seem to attack it with a lot of gusto. You know, it's nice when you're fishing a buzz bait is to have a high speed reel, about a 6.3 to one is perfect. That way you can crank slow and easy, but you can lift that bait to the surface. You have a lot more control over it. The temptations to over fish these baits or go too fast with them, but you want them just kind of to plod along. Once you get them on the surface, just keep them there a slow steady motion and when you get bit if you're in the right frame of mind you let the fish get down with the bait before you set the hook now I don't always follow my own advice but and in this case monofilma tends to be a, a better line for me with some of the no stretch braids I tend to set the hook just a little too fast I actually like to see little bites like that where it just kind of all of a sudden the bait disappears. Boy, what a way to, who needs a cup of coffee in the morning? You just need a couple blow ups, a big couple pike. A couple good fish. It'll wake you up. This particular bank, those fish seem to be holding about 15, 20 yards offshore. We haven't got bit in this zone. We haven't got bit real shallow. It's just no. kind of that prime. There is, there's a. About 15, 20 foot off the bank, it drops off about two foot. Mm -hmm. There he is! Oh, did you... oh, he just pounded it. That's another big fish, look at this. Get my tools for releasing here. What are the odds I'm gonna get wet here, Leon? I'd say they're pretty good. Yeah, me too. Try to stay out of the gills. Up, oh, I'm wet. <laughs> See how shallow it is here, the mud. Leon, look at this fish. Oh God, I can't even lift it. Leon, this fish is longer than my leg. This has got to be 46 inches, isn't it? Let's put the tape on it real quick. Right there. 46. 46-inch pike. Wow. There she goes. Oh, what a brute. What a place. Leon, two casts, a 44 and a 46. There is no place that I know of that I offer pike like this. No place. This is absolutely an amazing fishery. You're getting spoiled. <laughs> I sure am. Well, that's what it's all about. You find when they follow, they don't tend to. Oh, right, there you got right him. There at the boat. There he is. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, when they follow, do you tend to get them to bite? Uh, yeah, and you can figure eight on them quite a bit. If you get a hot fish, he'll stay on it and eventually eat it. Oh, that's another, that's a 45, 46 inch fish. There she goes. I got her hooked in the lip. Hey, I don't know if you noticed, I grabbed your little, uh, your uh, plastic shad. Your plastic shad, when you weren't looking, I grabbed it. <laughs>
and we'll put the tape on her. All right. Here, hold it up top for you. Hold it up a little higher. There you go. 47. 47 inches. Wow. Alaskan pike. I tell you what, next time someone says there's no pike in Alaska, I'm going to remind them of today. <laughs>